I was one of the one of the early ones that we started doing no-till soybeans years and years ago. Um, drill when drilling them into um, corn stalks. It was um, it was we didn't really have an option. We had a bad fall and early spring, and it was that was the way to go. Herbicides were able to do it, but I don't know. We've we've tested a lot of different things over years and tried things to be a little more innovative, to be to push, trying to get better better returns, higher yields, more profit, and. I did I've done a lot of stuff over the years of trying to push fertilizer rates. More fertilizer. You know, if you're gonna get more yield, you gotta have more fertilizer. It wasn't doing it. Um, so now we're kind of trying to push yields higher using less and less and less fertilizer. So it's kind of odd that you know we're going the opposite way. There's just such an opportunity, I think, for farmers to be more educated. And the data is there, the resources are there, that you cannot have the excuse of well, that doesn't work in my neighborhood or whatever. Though those guys are from Iowa, you know, that I can't work here. We go on our farm, we have from like 0.75% organic matter to 6.5% organic matter. We have A slopes, we have D slopes, we have super heavy soils, we have rocks. And it works in all of those systems. And especially in some of those extremes, that's where it works even better. But it, it boils down to though, it's we're doing this because it's profitable. We're doing this because it's, it's able to build back onto the farm and we're seeing it work and working with mother nature versus working against her. It's just such a better strategy, I think, for long-term resilience. And, and that's part of the, you know, being sixth and seventh generation, it's, it's you've got to be able to focus on the long term on all that and utilize the resources that we have, utilize data um, and make better, more informed decisions. But there's so much available um, that we're able to tap into. None of this stuff are we going at it alone by any means. And, um, and I think that's huge. And farmers need to realize like there's a ton of opportunity out there. This is very clearly where things are going. So we better get it figured out. Uh, there's real opportunity here, to, so don't push back against it. Like, figure it out, figure out what's gonna work for your operation. Um, hopefully we can continue to avoid regulation in doing this, but drive innovation, figure out, you know, be creative. And, and it's just really cool to see as farmers catch on and, and start the flywheel spinning. We're utilizing these practices as offensive management tools. I think cover crops itself, we, we frame them too much as a defensive tool to protect against erosion and protect water and, and just only for defense. Well, we want those things, but it's hard to put a dollar figure and a ROI on that. We're really thinking about the cover crop as that's our nutrient stabilizer. That's our weed suppression. That's our herbicide program. That's our crop resilience and, and ability to plant in the spring, ability to spray when we need to in the spring, ability to be able to go and, and harvest the way that we want and not rut everything up and just make a mess. It's more so utilizing the biology as the driver. We want to know what nutrient gain are we getting from that cover crop? How much is tied up in that cover crop? When do I get it back? How do I account for that? And tie that data into our proactive management systems. But a farmer needs to know what to do with the data. Not just data for the sake of data, but data for this actually making a decision that impacts the bottom line. So that's been a huge one. Obviously that's what we're doing with Continuum Ag and, and Topsoil and such is, you know, putting that data together, helping a farmer to actually understand, now what do I do? Okay, I get it, I see the video, now what do I do? Well, you gotta find other people around you. You gotta gather the right data. If you don't have some, it definitely helps. You don't, you don't have to have it, but it definitely helps to make an informed decision, reduce risk, and be able to be very successful in year one of going and implementing these systems. Land values to me is being able to carry on that family tradition, being seventh generation, I mean, that's a pretty cool deal. And, and if we're gonna be here for another seven generations, we gotta be able to take care of it for, long haul and we got to be moving things in the right direction.